Hey guys, John here. Today's video is about how to use the Tesla paint repair kit. This is guaranteed hands down the best video on all of YouTube as far as how to use this kit appropriately. I spent hours watching other videos and I wasted my time. Some of them had 90,000 views or more, but at the end of the day, the repair looked horrible. I've had my Tesla Model 3 for five years now and I've gone through multiple paint repair kits. I know exactly how to use it to get the best optimal results. If you want to skip ahead to the end, you can see my secret patented method. Actually, I don't have a patent. I've gone through a lot of trial and error and this is the best method that I have found. I do not have paint protection film. A lot of people will get PPF to protect their car. In my opinion, that's not necessary. In fact, it actually creates more problems than what it's worth. The reason why is because that film, especially around the corners of the car, will trap water and moisture in there over time, and then that will create corrosion, and that will create a lot of rust, and just it'll start to look ugly, especially in the seams of the car. So you want to avoid that at all costs, or if you really are set on getting PPF, you have to make sure that they don't wrap it around those corners. You do not want the water getting trapped in those small crevices. It is worth it to keep that area well ventilated. On the front of the car, they call that putting a bra on your, on your car. I think that's a decent thing to do. I'm not opposed to that. I'm, I'm not opposed to PPFs, but I just don't think they're necessary. So I never got any PPFs myself, and I, like I said, I repaired many, many paint chips. Uh, if a door hits your door and scratches it, in addition to creating a dent, that's a whole nother video, removing dents, because that's another challenge all in, an, all, all in and of itself. But for paint repair, this is definitely the best method that I have found. Hope this helps someone. All right, so this is my car at 77,000 miles. At first I thought somebody had opened their door and scratched my car, but this is the front mark. It's by far the largest. And then look at the one in the back. It's actually going up. So I think a, a rock actually hit my car and chipped it. So really annoying. This is the first real bad scratch I've had in five years. I parked my car far, far away from other people. Uh, first thing you want to do, as the instructions showed from Tesla's website, shake that black paint can as well as possible. This is a better paintbrush to use. You want to get as much excess, excess paint off as possible. And just ever so slightly, you're going to rub it right directly onto that scratch. It's going to be blotchy. You're going to have a lot of extra paint, and that is fine. Act as quickly as possible. Get used to this process. You're going to see me doing it here in front of you, and then you can practice on your own. You can do this as many times as you want. You do not need to be afraid of doing anything wrong. You just need to act quickly. And you can always undo what you do here. But the squeegee, I recommend using it because it, it, it do, the kit does talk about using it. But long term, it's really not the best solution. You want to wipe off the excess paint every time you reapply this squeegee. So, And you also want to obviously act quick so the paint doesn't dry. But you're going to very quickly swipe it across the the affected areas and you're going to see the scratch is still showing through so it's unfortunate it's not going to be perfect what this is doing is creating a base layer it's filling that hole with paint to start with and this is the first step so as you could see my uh, light was shining and there's still a divot it's showing on the car so I'm applying even a little bit more paint because it still bothers me you can see it very clearly there it's not what you want. You don't want that to show very much after using the squeegee. So I'm applying yet another coat. And this is before I apply the diluting solution or the blending solution. So after I apply that second coat, I go here and even just as quickly as possible, as light as possible, you have to be kind of quick and just slide it across. See, look at that. See how quick that was? Now you can't see the mark. You want to wipe off the excess paint yet again. I'll show you here how it looks. So here's the smaller one, going really quick. Just very, very quick. And now you can see, you can't see the, the scratch marks anymore after doing that. So uh, do this once or twice. Now this, again, is creating a base layer. 
wait for a, a couple minutes. You don't need to wait five minutes like the video said. I have had success with just waiting two to three minutes. You don't need it to dry absolutely completely, but while it is drying, you can go ahead and pre prep for this next step. And this involves using the blending solution. So you're gonna get the blending solution out. You're gonna use the white rag that comes with the kit. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna put your finger underneath one side. Now, I don't have gloves on here. I do recommend putting gloves on. This is not gonna kill you if you don't use gloves. I'll just tell you right now, I've used this many times without gloves. It's fine, uh, but it, I definitely would recommend putting the gloves on. So there you dip it, you just get it coated a little bit on there. And now you can see I'm brushing, and, and this is in real time. So you can see I obviously did not let it dry for five minutes, but I'm just getting the paint off around the scratch. I'm not even touching the scratch at all. So you can see the paint will come off onto the white cloth, and that's a nice indicator that it is coming off. See how it's coming off there on the, on the edge? And then you br lightly brush over the scratch, just ever so lightly. And you wanna work your way from around the perimeter of the scratch, getting it then right up next to the scratch. And you're, you're basically li uh, removing this paint. The paint you just put on, you're basically er removing it. So you can see the minute that you apply this, the paint starts to come off. And that's a good thing, but it's also a bad thing. And this is why I disagree with the instructions and why I've gotten much better results. You can fast forward to the end to see what I do to get it to look really, really nice and my number one recommended method. But these steps are necessary to, to basically coat the inside of the scratch as much as possible. So I've, I, I've wiped it down now enough to the point where I'm grabbing now the microfiber cloth. This allows me to dry the area. You don't want it to dry too much. So even while it's still a little bit wet, just go ahead and wipe it down smear get all that stuff off of it now look at the shine it's a matte finish this is why i disagree with using the blending solution it always creates this matte finish you cannot get around it you watch any other youtube video and you're going to see that matte finish it is horrible it stands out it's not it doesn't look good so what i do is i use that same spot on the white cloth and i'm going now to remove even a little bit more i don't that perimeter still is not removed all the way. So as I'm rubbing across here, what I found works is if you tap on it, just kind of dab at it. You're not like rubbing directly, you're just kind of patting the paint. And by patting the paint, that there's a small movement when your finger touches the car, and it actually will um, penetrate the inside of the scratch less when you do it that way. So you just want to tap the least contact you can you can have. The less the contact you have with the car, the better. You can see here now it cleared up all the way. Now this other one, you need to do it just a little bit more and see now it's coming off. Getting really close now, okay. And the other one, just a one final little swipe on there. That one's good. And here wiping it away. Now look, it looks a lot better, right? But it still has that matte finish right inside of it. It's no longer a white look. You can't see the, you know, the inside of the, uh, of, of the body of the car, the, um, the actual metal of the car. It's kind of like this matte black finish. And this is essentially where the, the paint kit drops you off and says, here you go, you're done, this is it. And if you watch all these other videos, this is where they end as well. Completely useless, trash don't follow those videos this is what you want to do grab that brush again and go over it just very slightly now there's two methods you can do here after you've coated it I'm, I'm getting the paintbrush there if you're really good at using the paintbrush this is where you could stop and end and actually I had pretty good success doing this on a couple spots on my car it really depends but again you can if you if you feel like it doesn't look good after doing it again with the paintbrush you can always remove it and just try again. You can do this as many times as you want. You're not gonna hurt anything. So don't be afraid to try to get in there real close with this brush. But what you wanna do is put paint on there and not you do, do not want to use the blending solution. So I've experimented with both of these brushes. So here I grab this brush and you'll see this one did not 
provide the best results. I've never had much luck with this little brush. It's kind of like a Q-tip. I find that it leaves a lot of extra paint on there and that's the biggest problem with this one. And then when, whenever you have too much paint, you have to go in and use that blending solution to remove it. So here, just to, as an example to show you, you can see I'm dabbing it on and it's creating quite a bit of paint sticking out. It doesn't look that great. But just to demonstrate to you, so you can, you can do it pretty accurately, but look at that, it still, it looks kind of, it doesn't look very good. But essentially to keep the shine, which your car has a clear coat, so there's the black paint or whatever paint your, your vehicle has, white, silver, metallic, whatever it is, there's the paint layer and then there's the clear coat. So most likely your scratch has gone through both layers. Unfortunately, if you use that blending solution, you're still going to be missing that clear coat. So it's not going to be shiny. It's not going to look like the rest of the car. Here I'm trying to blend that in because I, I realized it was a little bit botched. <laughs> you want to make it as smooth as possible. But essentially, at this point now, you would use the blending solution again, right? So <laughs> I go ahead and do it because I, I'm not happy with how it looks because it's it, there's if you were to let it dry and then put your finger over these scratches, you would feel the, the paint. So I go ahead and undo it, but you can see I'm experimenting here. I'm tapping just to see if I can get it smooth and keep it looking nice. And what I have found over five years of doing this is that you can never get it to look nice using the blending solution. You always have that matte finish. So what you really, the key is, to, the key for success with using the paint repair kit is to never use the blending solution for the final layer. You, you do not want to use it when you're finalizing your, your scratch repair. So here again, just to show you, I wipe it away. I'm basically right back where I started. This is the issue with the blending solution. So some for some areas, like if it's hidden away, it's on the bottom of your car, you know, this might be okay. And you might say, hey, I'm, I'm good with this. It looks fine. But most of the time, if it's in a visible area, you don't want to be able to see that still. Look at that, it looks horrible, in my opinion. So here I get the brush, I remove as much excess paint. Now here I go very, very carefully. I just want to go come up really slowly to, that, to this. See how I'm just only touching the scratched area? This is what you wanna do. Go as slowly as possible. There's even a better method than this that I will show you at the end that I've had even more success with. But look how carefully and accurately I'm placing the paint on the scratch. No matter what, I will clarify, you're never going to have a perfect result. Unless you take it to a professional detailer and they sand the entire surrounding area down and they apply a whole new, much larger area of paint and then let that dry and that takes a long time and then they'd smooth it out and then they'd apply a clear coat. So that's a very professional, it would cost a lot of money to have that done. So if, if you have a major scratch, you might want to consider that. But if you have small scratches like this, you may want to try this. Now on Reddit, I did see a post where they said, don't use the blending solution. Instead, use a polishing agent. So I said, okay, I'm gonna try this out. And I'm gonna avoid using blending solutions. So I left it just where I was and I had fairly good results with that, by the way. It, it, looked, it looked nice and that was enough for me to be satisfied. But for this video, I decided, you know what? I'm gonna try this additional method because I had never tried it before. So here I am getting the blending solution onto the rag. My camera is a little bit all over the place. Uh, bear with me while I get the camera back <laughs> oriented in the correct, the correct area here. Okay, so now I have the, the agent on the cloth. I'm ready to go. And it's been dry. I let it dry for about five minutes and I'm applying it directly over it and I'm just smoothing it out. And the idea here is to get that paint to go away similar to what you would do with the blending solution, but instead I'm using this polishing agent or scratch remover. They have a whole bunch of them on the market. The one I showed is not necessarily the best one to use, but you'll see here, once I, I do this, I'm kind of smoothing it out and 
should, I, I was thinking, okay, this is gonna create great results because I had never actually tried this method. But you'll see here, once I smooth away the, the paint, which it's raised, it has a raised edge on the body. So I'm, I, was, I was thinking, okay, well, if I, if I can scratch that away, it might retain its shine. I think this might actually work. And a lot of people on Reddit were saying, yeah, this is, this is much better than using the blending solution. But watch what happens. After I wipe several times, I get it kind of flat and I go and wipe it away, I'm right back where we started. Look at that, it stands out. You can see them very, very clearly. Definitely not the method you want. So what I found, here is the trick. Use a safety pin. You just dab it into the paint ever so slightly. You're gonna get the smallest little bead on the end of your safety pin and you're gonna get really close. You need to have a steady hand. It, it was tricky filming this, but you really want to get as close as possible and use your eyes, and you want to go as finely as possible right on top of the scratch. And what this is gonna do is eliminate the excess paint from creating too much of an, an indent, not indentation, but too much uh, of popping out of your car so it's going to allow you to paint it very, very accurately and right in that spot. And this is going to give you the best results, hands down. And if it doesn't look perfect on the first shot, and you, you basically, once you put the paint in that area, you use that paint itself and, and push it around with the tip of the pin. And don't, you don't want to press with the tip of the pin because the pin will create additional scratches if you're not careful just use kind of the edge and this is now your new paintbrush but it gives you so much more accuracy once you line it up and get it get that paint spread out very very nicely you're going to allow it to dry and then once it dries you're going to notice that this is the best result you can possibly achieve with the paint repair kit Hands down, I recommend using this method above all other methods. It does not require much paint at all, and it gives you premier results. I mean, these are like, a pre, not premier, but these, it gives you premium results, the, the best results possible for scratches. You want as accurate of a tool as possible to put the least amount of paint in that area, and you want to minimize how much it bubbles out from the surface. But you wanna leave it, once you put the paint on there, you wanna leave it there and let it dry. And again, it's not perfect. I'm not saying this is gonna make it brand new again, but it's gonna make it really close to looking like new. It's very hard to see these when you're far away. And you'll see my car has some micro swirls, so you can always use some polishing agent to even that out. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hope this helped. Let me know in the comments what your thoughts are, and I'll see you in the next one.